Mr. Vikram Murthy. He is B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from IIT Kanpur. Mr. Murthy has experience of over 45 years in HVAC industry. He is the director at Mumbai-based Univac Environment Systems Private Limited for unitary and applied HVAC products and systems. He is pre- presidential member Ishri and past president at Ashri Mumbai Chapter. Today. Mr. Murthy will give us a brief view on how technology will drive the cold chain post COVID-19. So delegates, let's welcome Mr. Murthy. So my subject today is technology to drive the cold chain. And it's not only technology, it must be innovation, it must be participation, it must be action by government and private sectors and many more things than that. And of course, a will by everybody to activate the cold chain and integrate it. So what drives the cold chain? Refrigeration preserves nourishment, adds value to agriculture, and extends healthcare services for humanity. The practice of refrigeration has historically provided an essential service for communities across the diverse fabric of India and will increasingly continue to enhance the lives of many. So this was a quote on World Refrigeration Day, the first one, which was in June 2018, and three more happened in the meanwhile. So I'm just going through many of this uh, uh, the components which uh, engage and which must be integrated for the cold chain. And so one of the things which is happening popularly now and happening well, uh, let me put on a pointer so I can point to what I want to say and that will be better if it happens. Yes, it is. Fortunately. Right. Here is the pointer. So uh, large warehouses like this, which may be fully refrigerated or partly refrigerated, are coming up across our country and they are managed either by an end-to-end uh, company or they are owned by somebody who provides the services of the warehouse as well as the transport and there are large ones coming up uh, all over India and in Mumbai and Bivandi. There are a very large number of them. Amazon has put up one. There's a large investor from all the way from Raipur who's investing in a large warehouse in Bombay. And so you can see that these are very, very uh, uh, properly managed and they have many accesses and they have many ways of storing, identifying and so on and so forth, more of which we will say later. And to integrate the cold chain, of course, that warehouse must move goods seamlessly to the delivery point uh, in a very uh, sequenced kind of way. And that can be a commercial cold display, it can be a supermarket. Here is a picture. I went recently to Hyderabad and uh, my brother uh, lives just next door to this building and they've opened up a new food and fruit market right over there. This is not a very uh, fancy one, it's a very simple one and hundreds of people come every day in and out. But I spoke to the people who run this and the food is coming from very far away places. Every day it is coming. Last year, the government of India railway started five end-to-end very long distance Cold chain logistics carrying refrigerated cargo like this. Five routes, for example, from Pondicherry to Patiala and four or five others, and I believe three more have uh, about to be commissioned. And so, uh, in the shortest you know, span of time, and also the cheapest way of transport, rail corridors have opened for the de- delivery of refrigerated products. So, isn't that wonderful? So, you have, uh, you can have Apple from, from Marshall coming all the way down to Trivandrum and something from Trivandrum, maybe coconut going all the way to Kashmir, right? So, here is another thing. The Konkan Railway has started this roll-on, roll-off truck. You've heard of roll-on, roll-on uh, containers on ships. Here is a case of roll-on, roll-on trucks. So, these are ordinary trucks, but you could equally have them as refrigerated trucks. What about aggregating the thousands and the hundreds of thousands of truck operators all across India? Many of them have converted to reaper trucks. And you can have an app to connect the reefer truck owners and the fleet with buyers. And who is going to use that app? It is the farmer, it is the person, the cooperative, who knows how to sell his products at the right price at the right time and aggregate it through the truck. And the truck will be the fellow getting the money. So the money will come from the truck transporter. And so it will be assured and a good service and everything can be tracked. All the money can be traced, the movement can be traced. Enhanced reefer container management, you've all seen containers like this, refrigerated containers, they've been around for a long time. But managing them well, getting them back quickly, uh, integrating the way they load and unload, all these things have to happen seamlessly. And of course, this is the more recent edition of this phase change materials, I've spoken about it before. 
so I won't go into the techniques of it. But rest assured, uh, to know that it doesn't require continuous refrigeration. It stores energy in the form of phase chain materials. Now they've gone up to eight hours of storage, and I have told by a manufacturer in Mumbai that he can give up to minus 40 temperatures also, which is wonderful. And of course, this extended to last mile delivery to boxes of the same kind of material. And this is going big. Digital tools and software to manage the cold chain. So you guarantee the product quality, time, and everything else what is happening in between. The temperature can be long, then you can see it or directly on your screen. And all of that thing, the billing can be managed. So software is going to be a big integrator. Aggregating farm produce for extended reach and cost realization. So there are cooperative farms now, especially in Maharashtra, which produce and aggregate farmers produce into uh, into pack houses where they are sorted, packed, and there's warehousing thereafter, the dispatching, retailing. They even manage their own stores. They can supply to anybody else. Last year in the pandemic, they exported mangoes to England using the help of Hindustan Aeronautics for the container management. So very innovative guy. And so this cooperative farm, which is managed by a smart engineer whom we met at uh, Refco 2018, uh, he uh, last year got 800 farmers to earn 30 crores in one year. So this is an average of 3.75 lakhs per farmer. Obviously, some farmers got much more and some got somewhat less. So catalyzing the cold chain. There are large corporations now developing these skill development centers. So agriculture is India's largest food production apart from meat and poultry and many other things like that and marine. So we have the second largest arable land in the world of the United States. Our export of uh, food agriculture or farm agriculture is the highest or maybe the second highest. But the realization of profit is the lowest maybe because a lot of it goes free because of excess. So we must learn to make the farmers become like this. They must be able to aggregate themselves so they have to be skill developed. Someone must invest in them, there must be a business model to do it. And uh, indeed, Tata, Tata started doing it, and I'm sure some others will, because they see a business case in that whole thing. Now we are moving on to uh, frozen foods and uh, blast freezing, which extends the life of food, which doesn't damage them. And that's an old uh, practice, but it's got far more technically improved now about different types of food and how you package them, and a lot more automation has come into it. So, many uh, products have touched. Six billion, uh, five billion dollars, six point seven billion dollars. Uh, that you know, two years ago, and potentially a large number of uh, more uh, money can be extended uh, farming. But this is the problem that we aren't able to do deep sea fishing in India for various reasons. Some is the reluctance by the uh, by the fishermen to go deep into the sea. Some is because of lack of infrastructure and the costly boats. But in Vishakhapatnam and some other places in Chennai. They have provided now, the government have provided deep sea going ocean boats which can do that fishing. And so every year, $500 million of tuna and squid, they go away. And the fishermen in Sri Lanka, Thailand, Indonesia, they are the ones catching that fish. So we can certainly improve on that. India produces more than 500,000 tons of pork, which is a very popular meat in Punjab, in the south of India, many other places. But we don't export enough of it. So there's a big opportunity over there. Because uh, this product is very much relished in Southeast Asia. And so the goat. So I am from Hyderabad. So in Telangana, you find probably 10 times more goats than people. And it also has the biggest export of uh, goat meat from there. It is going on. We currently export a lot to Africa, the, uh, Middle East and so on and so forth. But it is just 6.4% of the production. That means all the goats are eaten up in India or somewhere else. Uh, so, there's a big opportunity for furthering exports. So, I'm talking of technology, opportunity. Somebody must see this as a business case. Somebody must package the meat into more uh, presentable products. And, you know, the goat has many parts of it which are relished by people who know about goat meat. So, what about successful cold chain extension to reefer transport? So, India exported buffalo meat. We are the largest exporter of buffalo meat in the world, uh, much higher than Australia and probably buffalo and beef are the same thing finally so even in the pandemic there was a decrease but we still were the largest uh, so that's the whole thing and so obviously this is a big business opportunity and further packaging and diversification can get far more demand for these uh, next few slides i am indebted to uh, Bhavanesh Kohli who is the former chair of the of the cold chain national NCCD national cold chain development so he is saying the demand for horticulture 
dairy, livestock and fish is growing faster than food grain. And by 2020, uh, the demand for food grain will be 40% less than other food. In 2000, the simple 15%. So what we are saying is that things like pulses, cereals, wheat, rice and so on, no doubt between 2000-2030 there are increases, but the faster rate of growth is in, is in uh, meat and fish and eggs and fruit and processed vegetables and milk. So these are growing faster. So what does this all mean for us? It means refrigeration is very much required and that has to be uh, properly channelized. And so this is uh, coming to the end of my slide. It's a very nice slide, interesting it is. That is talking all about the cold chain uh, is really uh, pushed forward by the modern pack house. And indeed, the government of India is really pushing hard for thousands of pack houses to open. So what does it say? But when you catch the harvest, suppose you have a 50 ton per day harvest, if it's a small catch, it might go into non-food like compost, palm seeds. If it's slightly bigger, it might go processing into juices, mixes, jams, such as that Sayadri farms in Nasik. It is 15 tons a day, it might be meat, so it might go into a reefer container, go to the cold store market, or it might go to export, like the beef buffalo guys are doing in Andhra and Telangana, and go very far away. And if it's 25 per tons a day, it can go to the good old uh, the consumer to the Mandi system which is existing. So there's a multi-layered way of processing food using the modern pack house as the, uh, shall we say, a node for making everything more. So this is where the technology has to come in, this is where uh, the management has to come in, this is where large uh, investors have to see opportunity. So, so business processes happen when people see opportunity. So uh, in conclusion, this is my second last slide, the cold chain connects value extends market reach. It's all about inventory in motion. It's a wonderful term, I think, which Pavanesh has uh, found to deliver more over longer distances. It empowers producers, it has a multiplier effect and really empowers socio-economic growth. And it's all about the economics of the whole system to get the farmer a far better realized value for his product. It safeguards value and it really is inherently the backbone for agriculture's future, for which, you know, we're the second largest arable land in the world so why don't we help everybody in this process and of course it offers a logical sustainable and everything must be in that manner to allow humankind to continue to progress and this brings me to our last slide which says farm production is gainful when you can reach further away the further away you can reach the more money you can get that's the whole secret to everything you can go on to those trucks to go from Pondicherry to Patiala and you can get more money because they will get food there which they don't get in their place so that's the whole thing and otherwise, if it's a short term, there's a loss because it's surplus. And the other thing is that because there's lack of delivery, there's a big shortfall in supply. So this is a nice chart uh, which explains this whole thing about reaching further away. And only the cold chain can guarantee that. But the best part is this, the guy who produces it, he will realize better price than that is. So this is my last slide. And I say that technology must have the cold chain. The process and protocols must drive the cold chain rather than just the price. So with this, I thank you very much.